This next unit is about um, pedigree charts and, and analysis uh, in terms of genetics. And simply what that means is we can look back at um, a person's parents and grandparents to determine what sort of genotype they have in many cases, not always. So um, the first thing is, is being able to become familiar with the symbols. So if I have a circle, A circle represents a female. You have a square representing a male. If the circle or square is empty, it means they do not carry the trait. So these all don't have the trait. But if the circle is colored in, this would be a female that carries the trait. And this is a male that carries the trait. Okay, so um, let's you do an example. And this is the first example that you have on your uh, handout. So I have a female. And when I show that a female is uh, partnered up with a male to have children, uh, married in some cases. Uh, here's a female and male that have um, produced offspring, and I create a line to show that you have our offspring being produced, and then another flat line to tell us what type of children they have. Okay, so this is my P generation. This is my F1. So in this case here, in our F1 generation, we have two girls. This one girl here has a colored in circle, which represents that she carries the trait. Uh, two boys that don't carry the trait and one girl that doesn't. This female has a child with a male that does not carry the trait, and they have children, and their children all seem to carry the trait. Okay, this odd one here is a set of twins. You won't see that uh, that often, but just as a F, uh, just for your information. So these are two girls, twins, and one male boy, uh, one male that shows the trait. So clearly, if it shows the trait, we're seeing that it's not as common to have the trait. It looks like it's a recessive trait. I can tell that by looking up here. I have two parents. Um, that don't show the trait, and they produce mainly children that do not show the trait, but this one does. So I know for that reason that this looks like it's a recessive trait. I can call it little a, little a. So the genotype of that woman or that female is little a, little a. I know then, of course, that anyone that shows the trait ha is heterozygous, excuse me, homozygous recessive. So all of these are little a, little a. So in this case here, in order for these kids to all have little a, little a, we know that mom has little a, so she can only give little a's, but what do we know about dad also? He doesn't show the trait, so we know he has a big letter, but he has to have given a little a to his offspring, so we know that he's heterozygous. So let me just go th through that one more time because that's an important part. For this one, I know that um, mom is homozygous recessive because she shows the trait. Dad, I know, has a big uh, letter because he shows the dominant trait, but at the same time, he was giving all these little a's to his children, and so for that reason, I know his genotype is big A, big A. Now, how about these genotypes? Well, one of the things that I notice is that it looks like there is one out of four chance of getting little a, little a. And if you go through that, you're like, hmm, that sounds familiar to a Punnett square I've seen before. Perhaps, for example, and you just do through trial and error, if I have these, this P1 generation, this generation right here, being big A, little a, and big A, little a, does it give me a 3 to uh, 1 ratio in, in terms of phenotype? And the answer is, oh, yeah, it does. So that would make sense. I have three individuals that don't show the trait because they're showing the dominant, and one individual that does. And remember, these are probabilities. So it looks like there's a chance that that could happen. So you can make the assumption 
but most likely these parents are big A, little A, big A, little A, because they had to have had that little A in there in order to have um, gotten a child with a recessive trait. So you didn't even need to do a Punnett square, but there it proves it one more time. So for these kids here, do you know if they're big A, big A, or big A, little A? And the answer is no, because you can have any possibility. And so we just create a genotype where we have the big letter, and then we create a line that sort of says we don't know what that one is. And so just by looking at the phenotype, uh, at the pedigree of these, uh, this whole family, looking at the P generation, the F generation, and the F2, we were able to tell what the genotype is of every individual. And that's incredibly important when uh, these individuals are thinking of having children. What is the probability of the F3 generation getting that trait? And, um, and it purely depends whether or not they marry a person and their genotype. That sums up the pedigree uh, lesson.